This is Jolith O'Neill Dunn with the University of Vermont Spatial Analysis Lab, and this presentation, LiDAR 101, is a re-recording of a talk I gave at the New York City LiDAR workshop on August 2, 2010. This presentation was done as part of my joint position with the USDA Forest Service and in collaboration with the Urban Field Station. LiDAR is an acronym, and it's short for light, detection, and ranging. The textbook definition is that LiDAR is an optical remote sensing technology that measures the properties of scattered light to find range and or other information of a distant target. This is a graphic of the electromagnetic spectrum. On the left we have the very short wavelengths, the cosmic rays, and over on the right we have the longer wavelengths, the TV and radio waves. As humans, our vision system works in a relatively small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible portion. LiDAR works just beyond the visible in the near-infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, so we as humans cannot see the laser or light emitted from the LiDAR sensor. Most sensors, such as camera imaging systems, are what's known as passive sensors. That is, they rely on reflected radiation, typically sourced from the sun, in order to generate an image. There are some sensors, such as thermal sensors, which receive emitted radiation or radiation that is held on by a feature and released at a later time. LiDAR sensors are rather unique. They're known as active sensors. That is, they emit and receive their own electromagnetic radiation in the near-infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. The LiDAR sensor for New York City was mounted on an airplane that essentially shot out near-infrared light to targets on the ground. The type of LiDAR acquired over New York City is what's known as discrete return LiDAR. Each time the laser hits a feature on the Earth's surface, it generates a return, or a point. In the case of buildings in the ground, we get one return, or a single return. Trees are a bit different. We may have the laser reflect off the top of the tree, but because trees are not overly dense features, that laser signal will also travel down reflecting off some leaves and branches, and it might make it all the way to the ground, so we have a situation where we've generated multiple returns. LiDAR returns are geospatial data. They contain X, Y, and Z coordinate information. These points together are collectively referred to as a point cloud, and here we are looking at a LiDAR collect over New York City. We're looking west towards Columbus Circle. All the trees that you see there are in Central Park. This LiDAR point cloud is a collection of hundreds of thousands of individual LiDAR points. They have an X location, a Y location, and a Z location. In this particular example, a color ramp has been applied to the Z value. The blue color reflects the lowest elevations, and the red correspond to the highest elevations. In addition to elevation information, LiDAR also returns intensity information, that is the strength of the signal. Here we fuse the intensity information with the elevation coloration. Looking at some different perspectives from that same scene, here we are looking at the side of some very large buildings on the edge of Columbus Circle. You'll notice that there are a great number of returns or a high density of points on the tops of the buildings, but relatively few on the sides of the buildings. We'll zoom in a little bit, and this time to Central Park. You can see the very dense returns over the trees. The LiDAR collection was done at the springtime, just as the leaves were beginning to come out on these trees, giving excellent point density over the forested features. This is a close-up of Columbus Circle. You can see the point returns from the monument in the center, the trees surrounding the monument in the ring, and the intensity information even provides details on some of the road markings. You'll notice all the little dots surrounding the circle, and if you look closely, you can make out the individual cars and trucks that were driving at the time of the LiDAR collect. We'll zoom into one of those trucks right here, and you can see how with the LiDAR point cloud, we have different returns for the cab and for the top of the truck. Of course, because it's an airborne sensor, we don't see any returns on the side. Advanced algorithms can be used to process LiDAR data and to automatically separate the ground returns, here colored in purple, 
from the non-ground returns colored in red. By adding this information, what's known as a LiDAR point cloud classification, to the LiDAR point cloud, we can generate various surface models from the LiDAR data. This is an example of a DSM, or digital surface model, where the point cloud has been interpolated to create a continuous surface. In a digital surface model, the height of features are absolute. For example, if we had two buildings of the same height, one in a valley, one on a hilltop, the building on the hilltop would be higher. We can choose to interpolate only the ground points, and this generates a DEM, or digital elevation model. For this particular tile, that means we see the topographic features with above ground structures such as buildings and vegetation removed. We can take the DSM or digital surface model and subtract the DEM or digital elevation model to create what's known as an NDSM or normalized digital surface model. Normalized mean that the height of features are relative to the ground. Going back to our example before where we had a building on a hilltop and a building in a valley, as long as those two buildings are the same height, in the NDSM they would register as the same height. The intensity information can also be displayed separately from the elevation information. Because LiDAR operates in the near-infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, near-infrared features tend to appear very bright. Because this image was acquired in springtime prior to full leaf out, the only vegetation that appears really bright are the grassy areas in Central Park. We can also take LiDAR data, specifically the DEMs that are generated from LiDAR data, and derive other products such as contours. One of the real benefits of LiDAR being an active sensor is that it's not sensitive to shadowing. Here we are looking at an area of Baltimore. The urban canyon effect means that many features are obscured by shadows from buildings. Let's highlight two areas here. These are collections of street trees that are quite difficult to see in the imagery. But when we move over to a normalized digital surface model, so once again looking at the height of features relative to the ground, we can see the trees clearly stand out. Let's look at some other examples, this time from a more rural area in Vermont. This is a color infrared aerial image to give you some perspective. And then this is the intensity image. You'll notice that the intensity image, because the LiDAR was acquired during leaf off, has different properties than the color infrared image. Impervious features such as driveways and roads appear dark, but also so do some fields with exposed soil that were relatively wet at the time. Vegetated areas tend to appear brighter. This is the DEM, or Digital Elevation Model. You notice a tremendous amount of topographic detail that shows up in the LiDAR data. Many features that were obscured in the imagery are now clearly visible, such as the stream channels. This is the DSM, or Digital Surface Model. This shows the absolute height of features relative to sea level. And by subtracting the DSM from the DEM, we generate an NDSM, or Normalized Digital Surface Model. Once again, this shows the height of features relative to the ground. You can see that the trees in the lower left and upper portions of the image are the tallest features, with the residential structures over to the right falling in the mid-range. You can even see the power lines that run from the lower left to the upper right portion of the scene. That concludes this presentation. Certainly feel free to contact me if you have any questions.